this entitled mom always has to have the spotlight and be at the center of attention, even at a funeral. But some family members have had enough of her and decide to get some revenge. Happy birthday, today's your birthday and on with the revamp show. Some of you may have read my recent post about my entitled grandpa, who was emotionally abusive to my lovely dad, who is and will always be absolutely amazing. For those of you that didn't read, my father's paternal family is full of entitled people who are proud of things they shouldn't really be proud of. This story has nothing to do with grandpa though, but rather my uncle, aunt and cousin, who I'll call Louise fake name. Their dad's brother, along with his wife and daughter. Dad's brother inherited all of grandpa's dishonest nature. My aunt and uncle are the entitled parents in this story. Last year, dad's maternal uncle died. I'll call him Uncle Norman, fake name. He was always dad's and my favorite uncle. Uncle Norman was always really caring, really gentle, and had a great sense of humor, and was always brilliant around kids. We traveled the five hours it takes to go to where the funeral was being held, only to see that aunt and uncle were there, but no Louise. Their excuse for Louise not being there was that she had been to too many funerals this year, and that she'd been to five, which are far too many for a young girl, who was 16 at the time. We later found out that no, she had not been to five funerals. She had been to two. The three others were distant family members who had died, such as Louise's grandfather's sister's husband, whose funeral she hadn't been to. One of the funerals they included as one she'd been to was Uncle Norman's, while we were at the funeral and she wasn't there. It's worth noting exactly how entitled they act around Louise constantly. Louise was born after my brother and me. My aunt had been told that she couldn't have children, so Louise was a bit of a miracle baby. With this in mind, their entitled nature towards her is somewhat understandable, but by no means excusable. They turned Louise into a bit of a spoiled brat. She was given everything she was asked for, and as a child used to constantly attention seek when the conversation wasn't about her or focused on her. One time at a family gathering, she started dancing behind my dad to get his attention. He leaned forward and farted at her, which made her scream and run away. Dad nodded at me with a grin and said, that sorted her out. Still makes me chuckle when I think about it. Moreover, my aunt and uncle would encourage this entitled behavior. They spoke about very minor achievements as if she was a child prodigy. They would drive for hours to take her to places she wanted to go, only to turn back around and drive home if she changed her mind. She was always really spoiled, really entitled, and it was completely their fault. Back during Christmas 2013, I was living in China for my studies when the family did the big pre-Christmas meetup they spent the whole time talking about Louise and didn't ask my dad and brother at all how I was doing, even though I was on the other side of the world. Louise also goes through phases of being interested in various things, which would then become the entire topic of family conversation. When she was into dancing and ballet, we had to watch her dance and talk about all the different dancing she could do. When she was doing gymnastics, we had to hear about that and nothing else. When she joined scouts, yup, same thing. Irrelevant, but due to her entitled spoiled nature, it's almost impossible for her to make friends. So when she joined scouts, both her parents joined as scoutmasters to make sure she got the best treatment and that she wasn't bullied by other kids for being a snob. To be completely honest, her parents ruined her. She was homeschooled because she was bullied and didn't like school. Neither of her parents know how to teach, so she has no education. Now let's rewind back to Uncle Norman's funeral. I did my best to catch up with family members I hadn't spoken to in years, sharing nice memories of Norman, complimenting the music chosen and talking about how we had the same taste in classical music. The usual sort of thing you would talk about at a funeral. My aunt and uncle, however, would only talk about Louise, the kid that couldn't be bothered to come up. Louise had been learning how to shoot a gun at cadets, because when you have an entitled, emotionally unstable teenager, teaching them how to shoot a gun is a great idea. My aunt, the whole time, excitedly spoke about how her daughter looked like a little sniper, talking about the clothes she had to wear, 
how much they had to spend on her outfit. Although we later found out this was free, that was just the value of the outfit. We generally just gave nodding responses before trying to turn the conversation back to Norman. Back to the ceremony. Back to catching up with family members, only for my aunt to interject with more bollocks about Louise. Also worth noting, my aunt was only related to Norman through marrying my uncle. So why she tried to just dominate the funeral, I have no idea. I was getting increasingly frustrated as I often am by their selfishness, until this absolute gift of a little old lady spoke up. She was a friend of Uncle Norman's and was sitting next to my aunt. I hadn't met her before, so we hadn't spoken much other than the standard small talk, asking how we knew Norman, etc. Midway through Aunt rambling on about Louise in the usual exaggerated, entitled way that she usually did, Norman's friend cleared his throat and spoke clearly. I'm sorry to stop you, but who is Louise? My aunt scoffed, choking on air as if this precious old lady had just told her that she couldn't find the toilet, so she crapped in her teapot instead. Louise is our daughter! Oh. This little old lady then shook her head before turning around and talking to other friends of Norman's. I couldn't help but laugh. It was amazing to see my aunt absolutely shut down just from one little old lady asking an innocent question. She then shut up, frowning with an absolute foul look on her face before deciding to randomly complain about the food. It didn't take long for her to start rambling about Louise again, but it was great to see that look on her face. I also found out afterwards they spent 10 hours of the day driving, 5 hours going to the funeral, then 5 hours back so they could cook dinner for Louise. We got an overnight hotel, went home the next day. Look, it's pretty natural for parents to talk about their kids. It consumes a lot of their time, right? But if your kid is 16 years old, that means you've had this kid for 16 years. And they're still the main point of your conversation? Surely that's telling of an unhealthy relationship there. If your whole identity is wrapped around the success of your one child, that's a really unstable identity. And it's gonna cause a lot of problem when that kid grows up and leaves to start their own life. Because if the 18 or so years of your life was all about just them and talking about them, and you don't have any hobbies or any interests of your own apart from your kid, then who are you? What are you going to do once they leave and start their own life? Unfortunately, I think these are the type of people that become busybodies and try to run everybody else's life after their kid leaves. I work at a childcare facility and we are open from 8.30 to 4.30. We have strict rules about these times. 4.30 is supposed to be the last possible time you can pick up your child, not the time you start showing up. We have a policy to charge for every 15 minutes past 4.30, but we tend to be nice and not do that if it's a one-off thing and you're there before 5.00. We have a child with an EM who is late a lot. This year she has to pay late fees over a dozen times and always fights it, saying, I pay you to watch my son, don't I? Anyway, this morning she comes and drops off her boy and comes up to me and says, I'm going to be a bit late to pick him up today. Usually with parents, that means they'll be showing up 10 to 15 minutes after 4.30, which we accept. But I knew that this lady wouldn't be doing that. Sure enough, I ask her what time she expects she'll get here, and she says, Hopefully 6.30, but no later than 7. I have to do some Christmas shopping. I was shocked. She had been told again and again, 4.30 is the latest she can pick him up. I replied, that isn't going to be possible. He needs to be picked up by 4.30. Later than that and you're charged. After 5.30, we call the police if we can't get a hold of you. She answers with, I have urgent Christmas shopping to do, so you'll just need to watch him. I reiterate the policy we have and she says, You've said yourself my son is a great kid. You should feel lucky to spend that time with him. I thought you work here because you love kids. Or do you just do it for the money? I'm starting to rage inside, but I can't yell in front of the kids, so I smile. Tell her again the policy we have on pickups, and tell her to speak to the manager if she doesn't believe me. She laughs and says, just do what I pay you for and watch him, and walks off. I tell my manager who calls her after lunch to remind her 
that she needs to pick up her boy by 4.30 at the latest. Apparently she laughs it off and says she'll pick him up so we hope that's that. 4.30 rolls around and her son is now the only kid there. We keep him entertained while we clean up and she is called but doesn't answer. By 5, my manager calls saying if someone doesn't answer the phone or come pick him up, we have to call the police. We try the emergency contact numbers but one is a friend already out of town for the holidays and the father doesn't pick up. We wait a bit because having the police here will upset the boy but by 5.30 we don't know what else to do. I call once more and she finally answers. When I tell her she needs to come collect her son now, the conversation goes like this. I told you it was going to be late. And I told you that wasn't acceptable. You're lucky we haven't called the police already. Don't threaten me. You knew I was going to be late. I told you I needed to do Christmas shopping. That's no excuse. You need to come get him right now or we have to call the police. So they can bring a social worker down to collect him. You really know how to ruin Christmas, you bee. I just wanted to get some presents. Just come pick him up now. Fine. You were the laziest teacher ever. You don't even want to look after one child. With that, she hangs up and around 5.45, she pulls up. The manager tells her that this was serious and she'll have to take it to the board to see if they're going to take it further. Report her to child services or refuse a place here for her child next year. EM loses it, saying we've ruined Christmas and that she could have us all fired and that her family is used to VIP treatment in this town. Her husband makes a lot of money. And that she is disgusted we don't understand that. To top it off, when asked to leave, she grabs a $10 note out of her purse and says, Here, I've paid the extra time you miserable bunch have done. Get over it. He's an angel to look after. Hopefully the board take action against her because she is unbelievable. If she's so important because her husband makes so much money, you think she'd be able to afford to take her kid to a daycare where they're open extra hours. You just gotta love when somebody claims that everybody else is the selfish one. And why is that? Oh, because they won't do the thing that satisfies their selfish needs. So here's the story. W, hot, sexy, beautiful, very much pregnant wife, relevant. M, me, the husband staring at them confused. EM, annoying entitled mother, also boss. ED, entitled dad, also boss. So my wife and I have been married for almost two years now. We split the holidays because our families live in separate cities. These people know that. This year it's my wife's family year for Christmas. We planned it with our respective jobs, our stuff, and both got approved. Only problem? My wife is a nanny. She works hourly and gets paid for time ahead of time. She's pregnant and the poor woman has days where my future child really just knocks it out of her. This results in her owing time, which is fair. We don't mind that. However, this was just too far. So they invited us over for dinner and this is how it went. Kettle Duck and Miss Kettle Duck, we invited you because we need to ask you something. I rolled my eyes, I knew they were going to pull something. They've been notoriously self-absorbed the entirety of my wife's working relationship with them. And these people were friends that used to go to our church. So me and my wife were looking at them and waiting for them to ask whatever it was. And she looks at us with a bright smile on her face. You can't have off work anymore. We need you to watch Entitled Child on Christmas. I laughed and then saw that they were dead serious. My wife looked at me confused and shook her head, explaining we already bought the plane tickets to go and we are not able to get out of this. This is where the kicker comes in. That's the thing. You can't say no. You owe us hours. You are going to my boss's Christmas party. There were no kids that will be there. Meaning we'd work it for free. Granted we wouldn't do it for money anyway, but I'm darn sure I'm not doing it for free on Christmas. She looked at me and I could tell she felt uncomfortable. My wife doesn't do well taking up for herself and people often try to abuse that. None more than these people. So I shake my head no and remind them, they already approved this. We aren't doing this. They don't take no for an answer. Entitled child! Come out here and tell Miss Ghetto Duck how you were so excited to spend Christmas with her. So in walks this child, which granted is a very big product of her environment. She's four and I can't really blame her for how she behaves when her parents act like this. Hi Miss Ghetto Duck. Daddy said we spend Christmas together. I excited. So now we have two parents trying to force this and a child I had to crush the dreams of. 
Basically what it came down to was me pushing my plate ahead of me and looking them in the eye. You either stop this nonsense now or she walks. For what you're paying her, you know you won't find someone else. We leave the house and my wife thanks me in the car because that was stressful for her and the baby. And then they text us and tried to call our bluff. It was basically a, do it or else you're jobless this Christmas. So she hit them back with, have a happy new year because she was ticked at that point and we didn't talk to them. However, today was her shift and they messaged her last night asking if she was still coming in. So all in all, just work for classy people who aren't stupid. <sighs> really? Using your four-year-old child to try and manipulate them to stay? You know, maybe these people were in a bind, they really needed a babysitter, whatever. The problem is, you have a working relationship here. There was a very real possibility she could have quit, and then you need to find somebody else to replace her. Submit your story to be read on the channel at voiceyhearstories at gmail.com and join our Voicey Veteran community at r slash voiceyhear. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode. Alright Voicey Veterans, I'll see you in the next one.